This episode is sponsored by Fusion Off. This is what I hear at webinars, classes, or conference talks that are trying to teach me the intricacies of a technology. My preferred learning style? It's shit posting. Because shit posting is an art. And to do it well, I sometimes need to know what I'm talking about. That means building something with the technology that I want to tweet about. Right now, I'm building a new production service with the express intention of running it in containers orchestrated by Kubernetes. So it's time for me to learn the Dread platform by getting my hands dirty with code. What I've discovered starting as a Linux sysadmin is that there are different levels of learning of technology. You can know how to run a system or use a platform and that'll get you by most of the time. But there's a deeper understanding that can take your relationship with a platform to the next level. You can really strip the technology down to its foundations and know it. I mean, know it like in the biblical sense. You'll get so intimate with the technology that you, Never mind, this has gone far enough, but you get the point. You can know something on the surface level, or you can dive even deeper to know how all the pieces fit together, and most importantly, why. My skull is apparently a pretty poor container, because every presentation I've seen about how to start using Kubernetes has gone in one ear and right out the other. So I turned to a guide put together by Kelsey Hightower, one of the best humans I've ever met. It's called Kubernetes the Hard Way. I'm not sure whether the title was meant to intimidate or excite, but either way, it was just the hands-on experience I was looking for to learn how to get a Kubernetes cluster up and running while learning what all of its constituent parts do. It doesn't force you to compile source code yourself, although you could, but Kubernetes the hard way does walk you through building a custom Kubernetes cluster from scratch atop six Google Cloud instances. Every application needs authentication, presumably, but just like deciding to buy a car rather than create your own, there are some things where it's safer not to build it yourself from spare parts. Auth is one of them. In fact, I dare say that doing that with Auth would be awful. FusionAuth is authentication built for developers by developers. They know how to put developers in the driver's seat, but also how to keep them out of the pilot's seat because everyone flying their own helicopter is both insane and terrifying. What's cool about FusionAuth is that you can host it yourself anywhere you want, or if you're not into that, they will host it for you in a private dedicated instance in the cloud instead of a shared service. They have a free version that has no limit on volume and thousands of applications depend on it today. They know auth, they're not zeros, if you know what I'm putting down. So before you build it or get stuck with an expensive alternative, check them out at snark.cloud slash fusion. Check them out at snark.cloud slash fusion auth. They're not awful. Instead of leveraging all the higher up the stack services that you should absolutely be using if you're doing anything other than a learning exercise, it spins up six virtual machines that you can log into, talks you through configuring and deploying the various services that makes Kubernetes work, and that's it. You're on your own from there, kid. So I ran through Kelsey's Kubernetes tutorial in a single afternoon and decided immediately that I'd move too quickly. I'd copied and pasted commands with only a cursory understanding of what they did rather than painstakingly and methodically researching every flag the way that I did after I destroyed production by not fully understanding rsync. Yeah, brushing through it was my bad, but I also wasn't about to force myself to tediously redo all the work I'd already done on Google Cloud. No. Instead, I decided to re-implement Kubernetes the hard way on AWS. It turns out that's a much harder way to do Kubernetes. 
What I learned is that Google Cloud's approach to spinning up VMs is way more straightforward and far less arcane than doing the same thing in EC2. The painful part on both platforms was setting up the networking first. In the Google version, you need to create a VPC and then a subnet. Inside of that subnet, you create two firewall rules, then add a load balancer and a static IP. The end. In AWS land, you do much the same, but it is significantly more annoying. You create a VPC and then a subnet, but then you need to create an internet gateway and a route table. Then you need to attach that route table to the subnet. You then create a security group and add two rules to it, all of which is way more commands than doing the same thing on Google. After that's done, you're, you're basically back on the undiverged path. You've created six VMs or instances, and you can continue with the tutorial. Where it deviates, though, is that Google makes it way easier to run commands on the instances from your workstation's CLI. AWS has two approaches to this, because of course they do, and both are significantly wordier, so I mostly just bypassed it entirely. I just logged into each node and ran it there. The most maddening part of all of this, by the way, was at one point, the nodes simply just would not come up in the cluster on AWS to the point where I just eventually ran out of time, gave up and shut things down for the night because I am first and foremost a cloud economist and dislike paying money for things that aren't adding value. And now it's time for Corey Quinn's Cloud Economist Hot Tip. Yeah! Cloud Economics Hot Tip. If you're not using it, turn it off. That's been Corey Quinn's Cloud Economist Hot Tip. When I came back the following day and started everything up again, everything worked at boot. I don't know, have you tried restarting it? That's the rallying cry of the Windows world. It's a last resort in Unix and Unix-like operating systems. After all, who doesn't remember that childhood nursery rhyme? A Unix admin must be root, a Windows admin must reboot. What, your childhood wasn't full of systems administration deep dives? Pfft, what kind of childhood's that? Anyway, the fact that the cluster worked at boot is even worse because that means that there's deep magic going on that I don't understand. And not understanding how something works is a dangerous sign because you don't want unknown things taking down production in the middle of the night. Plus, the whole point of this entire exercise was to understand how Kubernetes works. But there are some things that I learned by building a Kubernetes cluster from scratch twice. I feel like I understand Kubernetes a lot better having gone through this. But to be clear, that's a far cry from liking it. That remains an unexplored area. But the process was undoubtedly more frustrating when building on AWS. Kelsey Hightower works at Google Cloud, and it's easy to assume motives that I seriously doubt are there. So for any doubters, let me assure you, creating the guide to Kubernetes the hard way and using Google Cloud was absolutely the right decision. Think hard before daring to question Kelsey's integrity. Think three times. Now, having done this entire process both ways now, Google Cloud's simplicity is night and day from the finicky nature of AWS's EC2 API. If you want to see my finalized working run through and try it for yourself, just visit Kubernetes the much harder way dot com. All in on red. Yeah, it's Adam. Listen, we need to raise the price on that new machine learning service we're launching at reInvent by a lot. I mean a lot. More than that. Add for the new pricing conventions, I don't care. I'm not the doctor, Matt.